test of success. How many people here have learned something that they didn't know before they came into this room? Raise your hand. Some significant information. Thank you. Um, I wanted to, first of all, I'm Bob Polonsic. I wanted to have the room kind of fill up. Um, I'm the chairman of the Vestal Gas Coalition. Uh, our steering committee is very proud to be able to have speakers like the three we have tonight. This is actually our 18th uh, public meeting. Uh, we've had a lot of them here, uh, and we've covered a whole diversity of, of uh, topics. Uh, we're planning on having one in another couple of months, and the topics we're looking at addressing there are going to be the issues of water. It's going to be fresh water issues, and we have some experts in the area that can help us with that. It's also going to deal with the, uh, the, the real sort of uh, the concern is wastewater, and we're going to deal with safe processing of wastewater. There are very able ways of dealing with that, and we're going to make you aware of that at the next presentation. That will be the focus of the meeting of probably two months from now. Uh, at this point, uh, we're very pleased to have with us again, and his, um, his bio is up there. Um, Dr. Bush is, in fact, uh, the superintendent of schools of the Elk Lake area. And uh, that's in obviously a very controversial area at this point with Demick and, and all the things we're hearing about Demick. And I think he's got a great story to tell uh, and a lot of facts to share that will again uh, impress you. So, Dr. Bush. Thank you. Can everybody hear? Uh, my name is William Bush. I'm the superintendent of Lake School District, uh, but also of the Susquehanna County Career and Technology Center. I'm going to step this aside so that uh, I don't uh, get in the way. Uh, our school district, uh, we're a small school district. Go ahead. Um, our uh, district, we have approximately 1,245 students. That's K through 12. Uh, we also are rather unique in the state of Pennsylvania in that our operating board, our board of directors, is also the board of directors for the Susquehanna County Career Center. Uh, interesting story, back in the uh, mid-80s, early 80s, mid-80s, our school board was looking at a, uh, developing a career center, opportunities for our students. Uh, we talked to all the uh, county schools in Susquehanna County, Wyoming County, uh, no schools were interested in it. Our board went ahead with it, uh, so we are the charter board. Uh, so it gives our students a lot of opportunities. Uh, we have semi, uh, seven semi schools to the Career Center in Wyoming County and Susquehanna County. Um, I would I would add to that uh, our budget is uh, 17 million 470. Uh, that's la uh, this current school year's budget. Uh, we probably will see that increase a little bit uh, as we go into next year's budget. Uh, our uh, particular school district. Uh, we have a dual county tax system. Uh, most of, about 75% of our district is in Susquehanna County, about 25% in Wyoming County. Uh, of that, uh, we have an equalized mill, uh, and the equalized mill system never seems to be fair, uh, depending on which county you live in. Uh, as you can see up there, in Wyoming County, in 2011-12, our millage was 44.2 mills. In 2004-2005, uh, we had 44.3 mills, so no tax increase in Wyoming County, actually uh, a little bit of a decrease uh, from 2004 through 2012. Susquehanna County, uh, since 2007-8, we saw our millage go from 35.6 uh, to 35.8. So we've been able to hold our taxes down, uh, in, in large part to the gas and oil, uh, revenues that we have received. Uh, and I just uh, throw this out, uh, our average tax bill in the Oak Lake School District is uh, $947, uh, which uh, we think is, is pretty good, uh, but uh, we have a number of taxpayers each year look at us and say, well, uh, our taxes should go down, uh, and we think we're doing good if we can hold the taxes from going up. So that gives you a little bit of a profile from the district uh, and again, as I said, the gas mill has been a, a, a big contributor to that uh, as we've gone forward. Um, our particular history with the gas and oil, uh, we are with uh, Cabot Oil uh, Company. Uh, we've had a great partnership with Cabot. Uh, they've done a lot of things for us, and obviously, uh, as we lay this out, you can see that. In 2008, uh, we signed a gas lease. 
Uh, we had a number of, I uh, was contacted by a number of gas companies, uh, wanted to sign the school district to a lease. I spoke with our board, and we decided to have a public hearing. We invited, invited uh, six or seven gas companies uh, through a public meeting. We had them come in. Each gas company had the opportunity to talk about the company, uh, how they operate, uh, what we could expect as a school district. And at the end of that presentation, the board settled on uh, Cabot as the uh, gas and oil company that we felt comfortable with. Our school district owns 179 acres. Uh, we signed for $750 per acre. Uh, we were we were early into the game, uh, much to our much to our uh, disappointment as as the price kept going, uh, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 6,000. Uh, so we certainly wish we we had waited on that. Uh, but that's not how it worked out for us. Our royalties were 12.5% and received a total uh, payment of 134775 uh, Gas royalties in 2010, we received about $296,000. 2011, we saw that go to $746,000. Uh, 2012, uh, we're estimating that we'll receive about 370000 uh, and that seems to be uh, kind of the trend, and, and Bob's uh, uh, slide uh, represented that also. And in, in this coming school year, uh, we would expect that the 370 probably uh, to be cut in half, about 180. Delinquent taxes, uh, we've seen a huge increase. Uh, historically, from 2005, 2009, our delinquent taxes, and we've collected about 91% historically at the district. We have seen, uh, we saw an average of about 312,000. From 2000, in 2010, we saw that go to 465,000. 2011, it went to 741,000. And 2012, back to 312,000. Uh, so with uh, all that, uh, we see a total uh, of our, of our um, relationship with uh, Cabot at uh, 2.4 million. Now obviously 2.4 million uh, is going to do a lot to help our school district, especially in times of state cuts, uh, revenue uh, decreases. So again, uh, our, our particular district has benefited uh, tremendous uh, with the gas and oil of Cabot. I talked before about being in a partnership with uh, Cabot. Uh, we've, done, we've done a lot of things with them. Uh, they came in, uh, and as we, as we developed that relationship, uh, it really took on a role in many different aspects. Um, I, I would share that when we had the public uh, hearing and spoke with the different gas companies, uh, Cabot did uh, give us references. Uh, they had worked with school districts down in West Virginia. Um, I called a number of superintendents. Um, and the superintendents are very positive. Their experiences, uh, again, were much like uh, we have experienced. Uh, never had any problem with uh, drilling, uh, never had any type of uh, industrial spills, no pollution, uh, no problems with the water. Uh, but it was really a benefit to be able to talk to those uh, different school districts and see what their experience had been. So as we started working with, uh, with Cabot, uh, they've done a lot of things. For example, our, our athletic fields, uh, we've had uh, Cabot, we've had the, the benefit of some of their equipment. Uh, they've brought in construction equipment, rollers, uh, skid steers, uh, uh, dump trucks, as we've done some projects on our uh, school property. Uh, one of ours, when they put the well pad in, uh, we have two wells, we have a vertical, we have a horizontal. When they put the access road into the well, uh, we asked that that be put close to the school so we had a better handle on monitoring what was going on. Uh, they had wanted on a different site on the school district. Uh, through our conversations, uh, basically said, you know, if that's what's good for the school, then that's the way we'll do it. So as they put that uh, access road in, uh, we have since turned that into uh, uh, an additional access road for our uh, buses, cars, and vans in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, it's, it's created a much safer uh, situation from the school for parents and buses to pick up and, and uh, let off students. 
So we've used, they've given us this, uh, equipment, uh, the access road. Uh, they also have donated uh, a, a quite large sum of money uh, for our students, uh, specifically in the Career Center. Uh, when a, a student goes in the Career Center, let's say it's the automotive shop uh, or building trades, there are certain equipment, uh, uniforms, uh, shoes, uh, and, and this uh, $70,000 to the Community Foundation uh, really has covered uh, a number of students uh, with uh, getting that equipment for them. Uh, they, have, they have committed $25,000 to the Community Foundation uh, the last two years, $25,000 each, um, and that goes towards the tools, equipment, uh, testing. They also have donated $5,000 to what uh, we call a challenge program, uh, and that's for students with academics and attendance. Uh, they also have come in uh, whenever we have asked them to come in uh, to talk to groups of students about career opportunities in the gas and oil industry, uh, just life skill, uh, soft skills, hard skills, anything that, that would benefit students uh, in the workforce. Uh, one of the things that Bob asked me about, uh, what is our experience with the gas and oil companies in terms of the roads, transportation, uh, you hear a lot of things, the negatives, the traffic, and the problems, and the pollution, and the impact on the roads. Uh, our experience has been uh, anything but that. Um, our roads in Susquehanna County um, are, are really uh, suspect, uh, especially when I drive up here to Vestal, uh, New York State has to have the best roads that God has ever created. If you go to Susquehanna County, um, you're, you're taking your life in your own hands. So our roads down there have, have always typically been rough. Uh, since the gas road companies have been in the area, they have fixed the roads. Uh, the roads now are in better shape than they have ever been. Um, so obviously that's been a benefit to us. Uh, keep in mind though, that the gas and oil companies, they're going to make sure the roads are in great shape because it's going to benefit them and their equipment, their trucks, their industry. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of a, a buy uh, product for us uh, to benefit from that. Um, also, some of the considerations about uh, the transportation, uh, when, the, when the trucks, the heavy equipment come in, uh, there are delays uh, depending on uh, the particular area that we're putting pads in. Uh, bringing water trucks into, uh, but again, the gas and oil companies, they have been very, uh, very friendly in terms of, uh, for example, if I call and say, you know, our uh, drop-off time in the morning is from basically 7.45 to 8.15, then they will kind of stay away from those times, and if we dismiss and pick up kids from uh, 2.45 to 3.15, again, they honor that, and they'll make sure that you know there'll there'll be less uh, traffic at those times uh, than normally uh, in their workday. Um, we did have in the beginning a couple of situations where uh, trucks uh, from the gas and oil or gas and oil workers uh, would run a bus light uh, or pass a bus uh, when they were not supposed to pass. Um, I sent a letter out to all the gas and oil companies asking them to observe uh, the school buses. Uh, every one of them responded back, uh, said that they would specifically talk to their, either their company or the subcontractors with them. Uh, so that was never an issue. In fact, one day I got a phone call from one of the uh, companies and uh, he let me know that one of our bus drivers was uh, driving uh, a little unsafe. So uh, it goes both ways uh, with that. But again, they, were, they have been very uh, helpful to us uh, in, in that partnership. Um, also with the roads, it seems to be more of a, a feast and famine. And again, that depends on uh, where they're putting the pads in, um, how many they're putting in. Uh, but really that traffic problem, that's really transitory. It's gonna be a nuisance for a little bit, uh, but that passes uh, once they get the pads done once the pads are fracked, and then you move forward. Um, obviously, it's been a tremendous plus for us in the uh, last two years 
uh, at the state level, uh, we have lost about $1 billion in school funding. Uh, so you can see that that $2.4 million that we've received has been a tremendous benefit. It's allowed us uh, not to have tax increases. Uh, unfortunately, I think this year we'll probably have a tax increase. Uh, but again, you know, all those years that we didn't, uh, we've never had to cut any programs for students. Uh, we have also had the luxury up till now that when people retired, we didn't replace them. Uh, we never had to cut staff or furlough. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case going forward, but at least up to this point, uh, our, our uh, revenues from gas and oil have been uh, very beneficial to us. And I think that's it. Uh, is there any uh, questions?